Hi, and welcome to Voice with Julia. Today we're going to be talking about the larynx, or rather, I like to say, the tale of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, because this really is a matter of too high, too low, and just right. Voice with Julia, change your voice, change your lives. It's first important to understand what a high larynx and what a low larynx sounds like when you're singing, especially in your middle voice. Because the middle voice is typically the area that we start having the problems in and then they show up in the top or the bottom. If you are familiar at all with laryngeal function, you'll know that the larynx kind of tilts as we go through the different parts of the range and we shouldn't really restrict the motion of the larynx in that way. But what we also don't want to do, which we all kind of have a natural tendency to do, is we don't want the larynx to rise as we go with pitch. So we want it to tilt, we don't want it to rise. How do we navigate that? Right now I want to give you a couple of laryngeal loosening exercises. And basically this first one is just a trill. For those of you who are experienced in trills, I say the best place to begin this exercise is right before the upper passaggio. Okay, so I'm gonna begin right here around C5, okay? So I'm gonna go. The next one. is this keeps us from locking our larynx at that critical point of the upper passaggio. Um, now, for those of you who may have trouble with the trills, I suggest beginning low in like the upper middle voice. So if right now, to demonstrate, I'm gonna show you on A flat, okay? A flat five. So I'm gonna do. Now, you might notice that I elongate slightly into the upper note. And that is simply to accommodate the greater action of the head voice. Then when I go into the trill, I'm gonna maintain that upper position. And the reason is because I want to anchor into the upper partials or the head voice. Um, so let's start again. I'm gonna do. And what I would say is when you're beginning to learn how to do this, if you feel that the larynx is really, really locking, don't worry about a trill yet. If you can just do oh, see how I'm changing vowels? That really helps, okay? I don't suggest keeping oh, because then if you have a tendency to do something weird and hold to maintain that ah, you're gonna do it there. So I suggest rocking between two vowels because that will help keep the utmost laryngeal freedom at that point. For those of you whose larynx is like to pop up when we go up in the upper register, raise your hand. Yeah, it's pretty much everybody, okay? So, what I like to really anchor into is my low voice. And then, as I extend up, I'm keeping the low, but I stretch to the top, okay? This is a little confusing, and for me, I know some people disagree about vowel modification, but for me, it really helps to think about modifying the vowel as I get to those critical points. Okay, so for females, I would say when you're getting right into the area before your upper passaggio, um, you're gonna need to darken the vowel. I say instead of ah, go to like an uh, but you can experiment and see what best suits you. Um, now, at the first passaggio, the lower passaggio, this is the tricky part. Okay, so if we begin down low, and I'm gonna demonstrate. First, I'm gonna start, okay, down here on A, and I'm gonna go up two octaves, okay? And I want you to listen to what happens at that first passaggio point, okay? So if I do, joie, 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 So what I did 
suturing that first passaggio point is I made sure that I didn't pop up my larynx at that point, okay? Because that is where the larynx will want to shift up and you've gotta be very careful to keep that nice and relaxed and down, making sure you're not pushing down your tongue to do that. Next one. Now I like these exercises to be gentle because we don't wanna bring in that driving pushing force. So what's really important in this exercise is that the larynx stays pretty relaxed and you don't feel it kind of moving and clunking around for each pitch. Um, now you'll notice on my first two iterations, I went ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. And on the next one, I kind of went ah, oh, oh, to like an ooh sound on the top. I think that's personally what helps me to go to a little bit of that covered position on the top, but you can play around with that and see what helps you. What you're aiming for is that there doesn't feel like there's a point in the voice that the larynx kind of jumps up. Yes, it's allowed to tilt, but it doesn't ever rise. Now this next exercise is kind of a counter to the one that we just did in which we're really trying to keep low and stretch. This one, I want you to feel that you're actually letting the larynx rock between the two octave positions, okay? So we're gonna do octave jumps on A to U, uh, and then kind of going A, U, uh, A, U. Uh. If you're a man, it can be U uh, and stay there. Um, just feel, depending on the voice type that you are, your natural modification as you go to the upper octave. exercise I'm going to teach you just to make sure that you're not locking we're going to do ah ah it it on thirds <laughs> Other exercise I like to do is yo yi yo yi yo. So I'll show you. We do it on triplets going down. really does like to tilt okay so to hold it unnaturally in a low position the entire range is going to cut off your range um, at the same time pulling up on the larynx is also going to cut off your range so it's a constant balance okay and you really have to tune into your body to know which direction am I moving too far in and bring yourself back in alignment now I personally think the voice kind of knows how to regulate itself pretty well if you've been trained at a certain level. Now, this takes knowing your instrument extremely well, and it also takes all beginning kind of learning. Like, you have to go through that before you can get to this point and know your voice, because beginners don't know their voices because their voices haven't been trained and discovered yet. So you might be asking at this point, okay, I know pretty much when I'm pulling my larynx down or pulling my larynx up in the top of my range, but I have no idea what I'm doing when I'm down low because the margin of error is a lot bigger. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some examples 
of what a high larynx, low larynx, and Goldilocks, right, normal larynx, sound like in a middle voice note so that you can kind of hear against the quality of my voice what the changes are and then maybe you can know what to look for in your voice. So right now I'm going to sing an ah and it's going to be slightly raised, okay, but you're not going to notice a poor tone quality. Okay, how do we know that's slightly raised? <laughs> right, we don't at this point. But if we go, I've lost tone quality as I go up. And that was with me tilting from the point that I was at. Okay, now I'm going to do too low of a larynx. Okay, that one might have been more obvious to you. All right, I started in a very yawny place. Let me make that a little less obvious so that <laughs> some of you don't say, okay, well, that's really obvious. If I do, I would say that's bordering, right? Right. So we've got to find that, oh, that's the too high, oh, too low. Where is in between? Oh, mix those together. Oh. Now, depending on where you're coming from, you have to know if you have a history of singing really high, light and bright, and kind of pulling everything up, then you may need to think a little bit more uh, low and yawny. Conversely, if you've been from the depressed larynx school, uh, 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 you may need to think that it's gonna sound a little higher and brighter. So what we're doing is we're adding these two elements of high larynx and low larynx, and we're trying to get them somewhere in the middle. And that can be a challenge.